Chapter 23, The Water Sisters. Good day, everyone. Rune here, and this is Chapter 23 of my What If Ash Met Meowth First series. If you're new to this story, click the link in the description below to be taken to the playlist. And special thanks to Pickle Dill for helping me with this script. Now let's begin the next chapter. Silence rings through the gym as everyone stares at Lily, completely shocked at what she's just proposed. The first to recover from the shock is Ash, who asks why in the world they would take that bet, as there's absolutely nothing in it for them. Lily mentions the badge, which Ash says is something that they're supposed to give to Victoria's challenges. It doesn't count. Lily glares at him before grinning tauntingly at Misty, asking what she wants. Misty tells her that she's not taking a bet, so there's clearly just Lily throwing a hissy fit. Lily smirks, saying that Misty clearly doesn't think she can win, since she's already backing out. This seems to snap Daisy out of her shock, as she immediately starts trying to talk Lily out of this. Violet just stands to the side, watching the situation silently. Lily ignores her older triplet, continuing to taunt Misty over her battle skills, as Daisy tries to tell her to stop. Misty mostly ignores the taunts, until Lily suggests that, perhaps, it's Ash's skills that she's worried about. Patience gone, Misty growls an angry, fine, before pointing a finger at her sister. She tells Lily that if she wants to have it this way, then fine, but they're going to be doing things a little differently this time. Since this bet depends on both her and Ash winning, it'll be a double battle, and when she and Ash win, they'll have to teach her war total water waltz. Daisy stares at Misty with wide eyes, her mouth hanging open. Meanwhile, Lily grins victoriously as she tells Misty it's a deal. With that, the group separate, Ash, Brock, and Gary following Misty out of the building, while the triplets move towards the back of the gym. As they walk, Daisy lingers behind her sisters, watching Misty leave over her shoulder, her brows creased with worry. Outside, Ash and Brock bid an awkward and uncertain Gary farewell, as he needs to get back to Pallet to help his grandpa with some things. Once he's left, the two boys look back at Misty, who hasn't said a word since storming out of the gym. The previous anger is completely gone, replaced with something much more subdued and sad. Tapping Brock's shoulder and looking down at Meowth and Pikachu, Ash tells them to go on ahead. He and Misty will catch up. With Brock giving the two a final uncertain glance, and Pikachu and Meowth simply nodding in understanding, the three begin to walk towards the Pokemon Center. Once they're far enough away, Ash turns to Misty, getting her attention with a soft tap on her shoulder. Walk and talk? She gives a small nod, and the two begin to walk in the opposite direction of the center, no destination in mind. After a while, they find themselves sitting on the edge of a fountain in the center of town. Neither of them have said anything, Misty not feeling ready to speak and Ash wanting to give her time to sort out her thoughts. Finally, while looking at the water in the fountain, she speaks. They weren't always like this. Ash turns to her with a raised eyebrow, before asking if she means her sisters. Misty nods, her eyes never leaving the fountain. She tells Ash of a time when she and her sisters were still little. She was barely old enough to swim without floaties, and her sisters were just in double digits but they were already talking about taking over the gym when their parents retired. Lily, Violet, and Daisy would practice every day in preparation for that day. They wanted to make the Cerulean gym even bigger than before. They'd even created their own move to be the signature for the gym. Ash nods in understanding, asking if that's the move that she demanded as payment for the bet. Misty nods, Water Waltz is a variation on Aqua Step. But instead of increasing speed, it enhances the user's sense of timing, making them harder to hit and landing counter-attacks easier. A small smile comes to her face as she thinks back on those days. Her face falls back into a forlorn expression as she remembers what happened next. Keeping her eyes locked on the fountain, she explains that when they'd taken over the gym from their parents, they would sometimes argue over who got to take on the challenger. But then, one day, they just suddenly stopped caring. They stopped putting any effort into their responsibilities as gym leaders and just started spending all of their time working on their water ballets or going to salons. It was also around that time that they started treating her the way they do now. She doesn't know what happened. She probably never will, but she wants the days when she watched her sisters training together. The days when they were her idols. She wants her sisters back. Ash is at a complete loss for words. He has no idea what to say to that. 
So, instead, he opens his arms in a clear invitation. Misty doesn't hesitate, shifting over to bury herself in her best friend's arms. Meanwhile, over in the Cerulean City gym, Lily is cackling while gloating about how they're going to be putting Misty back in her place. So absorbed by her gloating, she doesn't notice the slightly hesitant look on Violet's face or that Daisy has her back to her. She only notices when Daisy snaps at her to stop, causing both of her sisters to turn to her in surprise. Placing her hands on her hips with a pout at having her gloating interrupted, Lily asks what's heating her. Her pout is quickly wiped from her face, however, when Daisy turns to her. The look on her face is tight, like she's both angry and in pain and can't figure out what expression to make. She asks Lily why she did that. What in the world was going through her head? Lily huffs and tells Daisy not to get her swimsuit in a twist. She's about to say that there's no way she'll lose to Misty when Daisy cuts her off, demanding to know if she really doesn't see what she's just done. Daisy runs her fingers through her hair in frustration, tugging it a few times as she tries and fails to find the words for everything going through her head at the moment. How had it gotten this bad? Were they really willing to stoop to this? On their own sister? What is wrong with them? She's so angry at Lily for making that stupid bet, at Violet for not trying to help her stop it, but most of all, she's angry at herself. With a frustrated growl, she turns away. Snatching up her bag, she begins to stalk towards the doors. Calling over her shoulder, she tells Lily and Violet that they can ruin whatever relationship they have with Misty if they want, but she wants no part in it. Ash and Misty look up at the gym, mentally preparing themselves to walk in. After a long, uneasy night, the day of their final gym battle has finally arrived. Reaching out, Ash squeezes Misty's shoulder gently. She gives him a small smile before she turns back to the doors, her face set with grim determination. Then, together, they walk forward, Brock, Meowth, and Pikachu following beside them. Lily greets them as they walk in, haughtily saying that she'd begun to think that they weren't coming. Misty shoots her a glare, preparing to say something insulting when she notices something off. She asks Lily and Violet where Daisy is. Violet looks like she's about to answer when Lily cuts her off, telling Misty to worry about herself and get to the field, before flouncing off. Violet looks between Lily and Misty for a moment before following after her triplet. Ash and Misty move forward, pausing as Ash notices Pikachu following them. Shaking his head, he picks up the electric mouse, gently telling him that he's not going to be in this battle while handing him to Brock. Pikachu gives him an incredulous look, not understanding why Ash is putting him on the bench. After all, Lily and Violet's Pokemon are all water types. He could easily solo this battle all on his own. After getting a translation from Meowth, Ash agrees that Pikachu probably could, but Lily and Violet aren't the only ones with a team completely made up of water types. And in case it escaped his notice, the battlefield is literally an oversized pool. Electricity has a habit of spreading everywhere if it comes into contact with water. So if Misty's Pokemon are in the water if Pikachu's electric attack hits it... Pikachu's eyes widen in realization as Ash pats his head. It's not Pikachu's fault, the circumstances are just stacked against him. He promises that, when they get to the league, Pikachu has first dibs. With that, he walks over to stand beside Misty on their side of the field. Across the field, Lily grins smugly as she tells Misty it's sink or swim time, and she doesn't plan on giving her a life jacket. Misty snaps back that she doesn't want or need any handouts. Ash places a hand on her shoulder, giving it a light squeeze to ground her before he turns back to the gym leaders. Voice hard and cold, he tells them to bring out their Pokemon. Stalling won't change the inevitability of his and Misty's victory. Gritting her teeth in fury, Lily snatches the Pokeball from her belt, calling out Vaporeon. Beside her, Violet glances at her sister in concern before calling out her own pick of Dugong. With the sisters having called out their respective Pokemon, Ash and Misty call out theirs, with Ash calling on Meowth and Misty calling out Wartortle. Lily is the first to act, calling out Vaporeon's Aurora Beam almost before the referee has finished calling the match to start. However, the tweens and their Pokemon are not about to be caught off guard so easily. 
calling for Meath and Wartortle to evade. The attack sails past the duo as Wartortle dives into the water while Meath jumps to a different platform. It hits the water of the pool, causing it to freeze over slightly. On the other side of the field, Violet calls for Dugong to use Ice Beam. The call comes too slow as Meowth and Wartortle are already gone once again, causing another section of the pool to freeze. This continues on for a while, with Lily and Violet trying and failing to hit either Pokemon with their ice moves, and the pool becoming littered with platforms of ice. Lily growls in anger, telling the tweens to stop running and fight already. Okay, but remember, you asked for it. With that, Ash calls for Mia to use Iron Claw, but not to hit Vaporeon or Dugong. Instead, Mia uses the move on the ice, jumping from one to the next and breaking them into smaller pieces. As soon as the last platform is broken and Meowth is back on the semi-safe and dry regular platforms, Misty calls for Wartortle to come out from where he's been hiding under the water. Jumping out of the water, Wartortle lands neatly on the platform next to Meowth, which just so happens to be at the very back of the field, just in front of their trainers. With the Pokemon now in position, Misty calls for Wartortle to use Whirlpool. A massive vortex of water appears over Wartortle before he sends it skidding over the top of the pool towards Dugong and Vaporeon. As it goes, the pool of the Whirlpool draws in anything that isn't bolted down, like the chunks of ice spread all over the pool. Seeing the danger, Lily and Violet panic, calling for their Pokemon to get out of the way. In a laughable display of incoordination, however, the two Pokemon run into each other in their frantic attempts to get out of the way. Before the two can untangle themselves, the Whirlpool slams into them, sucking them up and sending them tumbling through the vortex to be pelted by the large fragments of ice spinning in it. By the time the Whirlpool dissipates, both Dugong and Vaporeon have been knocked out cold. Gritting her teeth in fury, Lily returns her Vaporeon, while Violet chips away nervously from her while returning her Dugong. Lily sneers at Misty, saying that even at her best, she's still riding the coattails of her big sisters. With that, she grabs her next Pokemon, calling out Quagsire, throwing its ball hard in her anger. Beside her, Violet holds out her own ball to let out Lapras. Before they can begin attacking again, Meowth looks over at Ash, asking if he can get out of the pool now. Looking at the platforms, Ash sees that they've all been pushed out from the path that the whirlpool had taken. Meowth will have a much harder time moving around the field now, especially if he wants to stay out of the water. Nodding his head in agreement, Ash kneels down and extends his arm in a clear invitation for Meowth to climb up. Lily growls in anger as she waits for Meowth to get off the field. The raven-haired brat is looking down on them! She'll show him and Runsty! She's about to call for Quagsire to attack, but Violet stops her, grabbing her arm to get her attention. It's against the rules to attack an opponent when they're switching Pokémon. If Lily attacks now, they'll be disqualified outright. Lily takes a deep breath, telling her sister that she's right, before turning back to Ash and Misty just in time to see Ash call out Dratini. Upon seeing the little dragon type, Violet calls for Lapras to use Ice Beam, hoping to take her out of the battle quickly. However, it seems that Ash and Dratini had already anticipated this, as Dratini swiftly dives under the water, avoiding the attack. Learning her lesson from last time, however, Violet has Lapras continue the attack until the ice from the attack is attached to the bottom of the pool, preventing Wartortle from using it as ammo for his whirlpool again. Lapras had to put so much ice into the attack to make it connect with the floor that a good foot width of the pillar is sticking up out of the water. As soon as Lapras stops the attack, Dratini pops her head back up to the left of the transport Pokemon, prompting Lapras to once again launch an ice beam at her. Once again, Dratini dives back under the water, swimming away from the attack. This time, however, she pops up behind Quagsire while Lapras is still using ice beam. Jumping out of the water, she swats the back of Quagsire's head with her tail, causing him to turn on her angrily. Jatini giggles as Lily tells Quagsire to use his own ice beam to take the slippery snake out. Just like with Lapras, however, Jatini dives into the water and avoids the attack, forcing Quagsire to make his own ice pillar like Lapras. While Quagsire is busy with his task, Dratini pops up near Lapras again, splashing her with some water before ducking out of the way of another ice beam. 
This continues on for several minutes, with Lily and Violet getting more and more frustrated as Dratini continues to toy with Lapras and Quagsire. Until suddenly, Ash tells Misty that it's her turn. Snapping their attention away from Jatini, Lily and Violet turn to look at Misty and Warturtle, the latter of whom is spinning in place with a bright blue ring surrounding it. Lily and Violet's stomachs sink as they realize that they'd been played. While their focus was all on Jatini, Misty had been having Warturtle build up power for an attack. Smirking at the realization in her sisters' faces, Misty calls for Warturtle to launch his gyro ball. With the sudden release of his break, Warturtle shoots forward, skidding across the surface of the water before slamming into Lapras. He then ricochets off in a different direction. Lily is about to tell Quagsire to attack Warturtle with Mudshot once he stops, only for the turtle to hit one of the ice pillars that Lapras and Quagsire had made earlier. Warturtle ricochets off of the pillar and into Quagsire before colliding with another pillar that sends him straight into Lapras again. Lily looks for somewhere for Lapras and Quagsire to move to get out of the way of the rapid fire attack, only to realize that both Pokemon are completely encircled by the pillars. It was a trap. AGAIN! Before Lily and Violet can do anything to turn this particular battle around, Lapras and Quagsire succumb to the incessant pelting and flop onto the surface of the water, their eyes swirling. War Total skids to a stop, tired and dizzy, as Dratini emerges from the water's depths to give him a ride back to their trainers. Lily snaps at Misty that she told her to stop riding their coattails. Using their ice twice now to defeat their Pokemon is pathetic. Ash gives the girl an annoyed look. Misty and War Total took you two out with Gyro Ball. All your terrible strategy dead was cut down the amount of time it would take. Growling angrily, Lily tells Misty that she should have lost while she had the chance, because now she's going to face a Pokemon that Lily knows Misty could never fight. Violet looks at her sister with a mix of worry, shock, and even a little disappointment. She has a feeling that she knows exactly what Pokemon Lily is talking about, and that's a really low blow. She hadn't thought that Lily would go this far, but there's not really anything she can do. Lily only ever listens to Daisy, and even then not always. And they're already in the middle of the match. There's no going back now. So, rather than argue with Lily, she instead brings out her last Pokemon, Starmie, while Lily brings out Gyarados. Misty breathes in a sharp breath at the sight of the Pokemon that had caused her so many nightmares. For a moment, she stands there, looking up at the Gyarados that had nearly eaten her, replaying that day back in her head. But then, her eyes harden in resolve. She's not the same girl anymore. She's not the girl that would freeze at the mere sight of a Gyarados anymore. And she's going to prove it. To her sisters, and to herself. Misty and Ash look at each other, a silent conversation passing between them, before they share a nod. Together, they call back Jatini and Warturtle before grabbing a new Pokeball. Misty's old and slightly scuffed from age, and Ash's bright crimson red all over. Together, they throw their Pokeballs into the air, and in a flash of light, two Gyarados appear. Lily and Violet gape in shock at the sight before them. They remember Misty saying that she was raising a magic cup to become a Gyarados, but they never thought she'd follow through. They'd thought that she would give up and either keep magic cup as it is, or get rid of it either because of her fear of the Pokemon, or because of how much effort it takes to raise one from a magic carp. But, here looms the living proof of what she's done. What she's accomplished. She has a Gyarados of her own, and she's clearly not scared of it. Lily grits her teeth, deciding that it doesn't matter. Even if Misty isn't scared of Gyarados anymore, theirs are still sure to be stronger. She tells Gyarados to use Ice Fang on Misty's Gyarados, Recovering from her own shock soon afterwards, Violet calls for Starmie to use Power Gem on Ash's own Gyarados. The two Water Serpents swiftly move out of the way, while their trainers call for a counter-attack, with Ash calling for Hurricane and Misty and Icy Wind. As the two attacks are launched, they merge together, the ice and cold of the Icy Wind getting sucked into the vortex of the Hurricane. The end result is a frigid Hurricane that could give the move Blizzard a run for its money. 
This fused move slams into the opposing Pokemon, dealing severe damage to the part flying type and half freezing the part psychic type. Seeing this, Misty turns to Ash, asking if he knew that was going to happen. Nope. Sensing the final moments upon them, Ash and Misty share a glance before turning back to their Pokemon. As one, they call for their new tag team move, Winter Hurricane. Once again, Misty's Gyarados unleashes an icy wind, at the same time Ashes conjures up a hurricane. They merge, just as they had last time, creating a freezing gale of whirling wind, filled with cold shards of ice so strong that not even the Gyarados that had haunted Misty's memories can escape its pool. Both Gyarados and Starmie are sucked into the vortex, where they are tossed around like ragdolls and lashed at by high-speed flecks of snow. When the icy hurricane dissipates, the two Pokemon are high in the air above the pool, leaving them to plummet into the water with an enormous splash. The tidal wave of water soaks everyone, leaves the pool half empty, and the gym leader's remaining two Pokemon knocked out. Lily falls to her knees in shock. How had they lost? They were using their strongest Pokemon. They were going all out. But they still lost. Why? Why did they keep losing? It didn't matter what Pokemon they used, what strategy they tried, they always lost! And now, even their own little sister, the baby, the shy little squirt that always hid behind them for protection had beaten them. When did they get this bad? Were they ever good to begin with? Clenching her fists and pursing her lips, she gets to her feet. A deal's a deal. They won. Walking around the pool, she meets her sister and her friends halfway, Violet walking silently beside her. Together, they each hold out a Cascade badge to the tweens. Misty and Ash take their badges. This is it. The moment they'd been working towards since they first passed through Cerulean all that time ago. And yet, it felt unsatisfying. Misty couldn't quite put her finger on it. The battle had been pretty spectacular, but that's all it had been. Just spectacle. There wasn't any true challenge in it. Lily and Violet hadn't knocked out any of their Pokemon. They'd switched them out on their own. The fact that it had been as easy as it was should make her ecstatic, but it doesn't. She looks at Ash. One look at his face and she can tell that he's thinking the same thing. This victory doesn't feel satisfying. But she can also tell that, unlike her, he seems to have an idea of why. He looks up from the badge in his hand, his face set in a hard frown as he turns to Lily and Violet. You weren't fighting at your best. Why? Lily and Violet look at him incredulously. They were fighting their hardest. They were taking this battle seriously and he has the gall to say they weren't? Ash shakes his head. The battle was the best it could have been, but it wasn't the best the sisters could have been. The movements of their Pokemon were clumsy, their commands came a few seconds too slow to be natural. It's like they were expecting something else to be on the field, and when it wasn't, they stumbled. Like when you're expecting another step on a staircase only to find there isn't one there. The girls stare at him, looking like they're about to say something. But before they can, a rock wrapped in paper smashes through their window, frightening everyone and drawing their attention. The older sisters rush to the window to see if they can spot the thrower, while Ash, Misty, Brock, Meowth, and Pikachu go to the rock. Picking it up, Misty unwraps the paper, finding that someone has written on it. A letter? She reads the first few lines before her eyes widen in terror. Not looking away from the paper, she shouts for Lily and Violet to get over here now. Deeply worried about the fear in Misty's voice, they rush over, looking at the letter over her shoulders. They each let out gasps of horrified shock, Lily's hands clenched into fists as Violet covers her mouth in horror. The words on the page are unnervingly playful for what they imply. We have a daisy, and we want all the Pokemon in the Cerulean Gym. Want to trade? And that, everyone, is where I'll be leaving the story for now. Join me next time as our heroes plan a rescue and the Cerulean sisters make an unexpected discovery. I'm Rune, see you next chapter.